Pay attention to what it says on the bottom. Walter and Johnny, goodbye wives and daughters. We died an easy death. Love from us both, be good. Pretty sad. Years ago, Linda and I were coming up through this little town here, and there was a sign on the outskirts of town. It said, world's best banana cream pie just ahead. Well, Linda and I stopped. I mean, how can you pass that up? There's no way. So Linda and I stopped, went in to get a piece of this incredible banana cream pie. Probably the worst piece of pie I ever had in my life. It was bad. This is the Smith Mine near Red Lodge, Montana, and it's the site of the deadliest mine disaster in Montana history. This is a coal mine. It operated from early 1900s, like 1907 or so, until 1943 when the disaster struck. They were constantly modernizing, but in 1943 they were still using carbide lamps to see, and that's an open flame that you're wearing on your helmet. And what happened was uh, they had a methane gas leak and the flame from a carbide lamp caused an explosion. Some of the men died instantly. Others, others just suffocated in the methane gas. A total of 75 people died here. So yesterday, Linda and I took off from Red Lodge after doing the car repair. <clears throat> Drove not too far down to Matitsi, Wyoming, and the winds really picked up. And ahead of us on down to Lander was even going to be worse. So we were sitting by that city park in Matitsi for a while, and we looked at our options and there was campgrounds. So we managed to drive about 15 miles up into this, this nice, quiet campground along the Grey Bowl River here. And uh, we had a really nice night. Now we're just getting ready to head, head south like we planned. We're going on down into central Utah, but no itinerary. No, we're not going very fast anyway. Just having fun along the way. This is a pretty neat little display in Matitsi, Wyoming. Sheep herder's wagon. A can of pork and beans. Uh, peaches, pears, and spam. This one's got a metal top on it. The one in the back's got the original canvas top and do you know these things are these are insulated sometimes they were just insulated with wool batting but they weren't just a canvas top so in fact this one I can feel it's, it's got substance underneath it you get to live in that will you watch the sheep per, or graze <laughs> out alone by yourself for maybe months at a time Continental Oil Company. All original, complete with the wooden axles. You know you had to grease the bearings every day? Every day. Had to jack it up, pull the nut here, grease the, uh, it doesn't have bearings, that's why you had to grease it. It's just a metal, a metal cone in there. See this part here? So the center part of the axle is wood, and there's a name for this, I can't remember it. I found one of these on our property in Montana. I found it with a metal detector, just this end. And then the hub itself here has a uh, metal sleeve inside, and you had to take that off and grease that every day. Well, every day if you were uh, traveling like the, uh, 
people that the pioneers that did the Oregon Trail that were running these all day long, well, every day they had to grease the axles. A buckboard that belonged to the U.S. Forest Service back in the day. What do you think, Linda? I think I'm going to set up some targets for my slingshot on that pallet while we wait. What are you waiting for? The wind to die down. Yeah, we uh, we were on the highway. We were going over South Pass. South side of Lander, Wyoming. South Pass is where the immigrants went over uh, from the Oregon Trail. And the California Trail divided on the other on the west side of South Pass, but it was the one place along the Rocky Mountains where uh, they could get their wagons over easily. So hundreds of thousands of people came through South Pass. Anyways, it's really screeching out there. It's gusting 40, 50, 60 on the highway. Yeah, again, just like yesterday. So we pulled off into the woods here after being slowed down to like 25, 35 on the highway. So uh, we're going to sit this out until the wind dies down this evening and then we're going to go find a uh, nicer place to camp. I know it doesn't show up too well, but this is bear scat. There's a little more over here. So uh, when the sun or when the wind dies down at sunset, we're going to move out to a drier area where the bears don't hang around too much. They like these uh, bushes down here, all these willow bushes. Let me show you right behind, right in front of where I where I am, where I showed you where that moose was. Bears love this stuff. <laughs> so yeah, we'll be moving on. So this place is called Buckhorn Canyon. We got off got off uh, of Highway 191, just north of Vernal to get here. And there's a few places to camp. First come, first serve dispersed camping. We've been trying to avoid the wind this whole trip. Today is really windy again. This is the third day in a row. Uh, first day was uh, pretty dangerous. We had to get off the highway. Yesterday was almost like that. Today not quite so bad. It's still gusting 40 so it's not exactly fun to be out, you know, makes your eyes water and everything. But, but last night we were camped above 9,000 feet. The night before, 8,000 feet, so we're down, I don't know, I'm guessing around 6,000. feel like I can breathe normal down here. But it, it's absolutely beautiful, though. Well, Linda and I are about 12 miles north of Vernal, Utah camp not too far off the highway. In fact, we can hear the uh, cars up on the roadway. BLM, beautiful. There's a river going through it. No one else camped here. You'd have to know it was here to get here, but um, we're just poking around now. Lots of deer in the area. We're kind of looking for geodes. What do you think, Linda? 
down there. This used to be an ancient uh, waterfall, yeah? Or here? I think it's been a waterfall for a while. I'm also thinking, I, I hope we have time to go back and get the metal detector and come back up here and look for gold. Oh, good time. Good place to give a view. So Linda just said, wonder what's up on the next level. And that's kind of the way it is for us. <laughs> what's over the next hill? What's around the bend? And what's over the... Only this is steep, Linda. Hey, watch out for the boulders. Uh, try not to knock any down on me. Yeah, you're pushing it. You want to <laughs> knock? <laughs> you are trying to knock that big one down on me. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting out of here. That could be an agate or a geode. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. I don't think we should break that open here. I think we should do it under more controlled circumstances. Laboratory. <laughs> yeah, laboratory. Let's try to let's do that very carefully when we get home. I never know what you're going to find laying next to the road. <laughs> we decided we couldn't wait till we get home. I don't have my geologist hammer, but I do have my trusty tomahawk. So we're going to try to open this up. Whoa. Nothing! But it is all shiny and crystalline inside. Sparkles. I was hoping it'd be like agate inside because this is normally what agate looks like. Oh well. <laughs> well, Linda's back at the car taking a break and I just went out for a walk after lunch here and I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to get way back up into there. I don't really see anything. There's a real steep game trail down at this end, but I don't know, that looks... That's really steep. I'd hate to tumble down that hill. And then back over here, may be able to climb up these rocks right here. I'm going to go take a look at that right now. It's closer than it looks with this wide angle lens. But I'm going to go take a look. Well, this is as far as I made it, and it's as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm not making the vertical climb to the top. That's all right. There's a lot to see around here. I'll go explore something else. Well, I found the way to the top. <laughs> Remember when I showed you, I pointed way off to my right and I showed you that trail that went up and it goes up, 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 up here. Well, I followed it all the way up to here and then across the top. But that took me like another hour after I filmed the last clip to find that part up there. So I give up for now. So I literally just got up. Linda's still down there in the in the campsite sleeping down the trailer. <laughs> I just wanted to take you for a little walk and show you some views this morning. So I'm still in Buckhorn or we're still in Buckhorn Canyon. It's a beautiful place. There aren't a lot of campsites down here. Uh, <clears throat> I suppose there's uh, four or five really good ones and then there's some others where you can kind of camp off in the grass. Beautiful morning. 
There's a campsite down here. We're camped right behind these trees right here. You can drive back in and there's more campsites further in and then there's some campsites away from the away from the river too. Kind of looks like there used to be a bridge here. In fact, there obviously was a bridge here. Now on the other side, you can see that cave. This is big. Now you can get here um, if you go back out on the highway and take the next driveway or, or the cut, then you can see there's a guardrail. That's Highway 191 right there. If you there's a break in the guardrail and you can turn in, you could actually drive back in here. Wow, that's quite the cave. There's a better view of it. Looks like people have camped in there. I see it's tagged over on the this end down here. But otherwise it looks pretty clean down there. Pretty cool. One thing about this spot, though, is is the mosquitoes because it's on the river. So bring repellent. <laughs> Last night, Linda and I, after we got our showers, we didn't want to put repellent back on. So we were sitting in the car. It was like being in a shark cage, <laughs> watching the mosquitoes on the outside. <laughs> Anyways, bring repellent. Well, this was Buckhorn Canyon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share. You know the drill. Please subscribe. And we'll see you around. Thank <laughs> you.